to your report, for example. Uh, I'd like to know, um, you said, or oh, ADB says in the report in Development Outlook, that uh, Indonesia's uh, economy will actually pick up again mm -hmm. this year and next year. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's unlike what we say, it's going down the drain, for example, or it's not stagnant, rather. Uh, what are the factors that, that actually uh, uh, push this, this growth? We see uh, uh, a uh, turning around in Indonesia's growth rate from the previous four years of uh, steady uh, uh, deceleration. All right. I think number one reason is reform. That uh, the including the subsidies, the, the government uh, exactly the government's uh, uh, effort to improve investment climate, to take advantage of lower oil prices, to uh, uh, do the uh, fuel subsidy reform and use the saving, mm. invest the saving uh, uh, wisely in infrastructure, education, and healthcare, so that future productivity of the labor force, future productivity of the corporate sector can be made uh, high. These are very important. It Under, underpins this year, next year, and future uh, growth. That's number one. Number two, of course, the uh, overall external environment is mm -hmm. also a bit better yeah, yeah. Uh, right. now that uh, you know, the recovery of US, Europe, Japan help Indonesia's exports to those uh, countries, yeah. also help more potential uh, direct investment, portfolio flow from those country uh, to, uh, to uh, Indonesia, if Indonesia chooses to have an uh, open policy towards uh, investment from those countries. Uh, and uh, number three, you know, uh, lower commodity prices also contribute to lower inflation that we right. see in, uh, in the, uh, Indonesia relative to the previous uh, years. And lower inflation is uh, helpful not only directly to households, uh, in terms of uh, raising of real income, yeah. but also provides space to uh, central bank. Right, the central bank, can, you know, uh, uh, key task is to making sure inflation does not get out of hand. Mm -hmm. When inflation is lower enough, this provides central bank some space to stimulate the economy if there's a need. Yes, it's not you, you. You have to do it. Right. But, but if you run into headwinds, that requires more stimulative uh, policies, lower inflation give you a way to do that. Well, fiscal policies are important. And fiscal policy, of course, is very important as well. Fiscal, right. Both fiscal and monetary policies well, are helpful. Both at the same level? Or is there, for, for Indonesia's current growth level, for example, what is more important, the fiscal policies or the, the others, monetary? They, they have different roles to um, play. You know, monetary policy, uh, central bank, uh, had to deal with two things, yeah. you know, you you, uh, you know you want to make sure prices are stable, right. you want to make sure you don't create, uh, the economy does not create uh, asset price bubbles, you want to make sure banks do not uh, do overly risky things so right. that they will compromise financial, uh, financial uh, stability. And when you have a shortage of a demand, monetary policy can help by stimulating the economy by having a, 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 a bit more expansionary monetary policy. Fiscal policy can do the last part, uh, as well, but fiscal policy, because there's uh, a set of uh, uh, additional tools. tools. It can change uh, uh, tax policy to encourage innovation, uh, to encourage uh, education, and can provide uh, help to poor households. It can Promote also directly equity. work on promoting inclusion and so on. So they have different roles to um, um, play. Uh, Indonesia, like you say, is does I it is in in the, in the course of doing it, re starting reforms, for example. Mm -hmm. to Strengthen this manufacturing base, but uh, everything is uh, is taking time, even in normal times. So, so uh, first of all, is do you think the government is uh, on the right track on this side? I think the things? government is broadly on the uh, right track, and certainly, and the market uh, also agrees with that kind of assessment. You know, you can see evidence of uh, enhanced uh, corporate confidence. Right. Uh, in investment climate, consumer confidence uh, in their future uh, income, these are encouraging uh, signs. There are still additional things I think uh, right. the country can do that will help the country's uh, future More growth, faster, yeah. including in Indonesia uh, has, uh, it uh, does not have the most open regime to foreign direct investment, and that uh, potentially is something that can uh, help the country even further. I understand the uh, uh, country has a uh, uh, food uh, self-sufficiency um, program, um, yeah. program. You know, it's obviously a very well-intentioned program right. and, and to uh, uh, you know uh, enhance the country's resistant re resilience, resilience to, to a uh, potential shortage of a world uh, uh, food if it happens. The 
uh, trade-off uh, is that you know the when you think about uh, what is important for food uh, food policy. The key, of course, is to make sure you have reli reliable supply. Right. You will not run out of food, and you want food to be affordable yes. to right. households, especially poor households. Self-sufficiency program doesn't automatically give you this. If self-sufficiency means I stop importing, that often means stop importing means you get international prices are yeah. cheaper. You will now you're going to force households to pay more yeah. than they otherwise would be the case. So they will counter the. Uh, promoting yeah, pushing, correct. promoting, uh, helping poor households, that kind of objective. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, number two, if food is truly entirely derived from home sources, it doesn't necessarily generate more reliable supply. What if you have natural disasters and so on? Yeah. So you could make yourself uh, more vulnerable, vulnerable rather, rather than less vulnerable to fluctuation in supply. So these are the uh, kind of factors we need to take into account. This, um, there is also one component that that worries me, and worries a lot of Indonesia is that is the composition of the investment that comes in. Do you see a change from mere portfolio to uh, to actual? That's a, that, this is a very important point that our report uh, points out, which is that uh, when you look at cross-border capital flows, one shouldn't just look at the total volume. The value composition yeah, yeah. matters a lot. Countries that uh, uh, derive most of the capital inflow f from uh, FDI less on what, would call, what I would call yeah. hot money, mm -hmm. those countries tend to be more resilient to, say, U.S. Yeah, interest yeah, rate rise sure. to uh, international yeah. capital flows. Well, Relative to countries, that rely more on borrowing from foreign banks, borrowing from foreign uh, capital markets. So uh, for developing countries, uh, at least uh, uh, one can make a case that uh, the government want to use policies to try to moderate or uh, induce some uh, uh, changing the composition of capital flows in the direction yeah. of more FDI, and they will help countries' uh, resilience. Okay. Thank you for very much. Unfortunately, we we're out of time. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I, I wish there were more, but uh, thank you very much for sharing your insight with us. We were talking to uh, Professor Shang Ji Wei from ADB, his chief economist at the ADB based in Manila. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope it is, uh, you find it as interesting as I did. Let's see next time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That was nice.